Hello, grade sevens. It's so good to be teaching you guys again. I've missed seeing your faces and interacting with you. I do hope you are all well, you are staying home, you are staying safe, and you are able to do your work. We are learning under very different circumstances, but we soldier on nonetheless. So this first maths lesson will be a revision lesson on the homework that I had given you. The first topic that we covered was constructions. We had done constructions of angles, triangles, and circles. We were left with quadrilaterals to cover. The resources that you would need for this exercise, sharp pencil, a blue pen, 30 centimeter ruler, a protractor, and a compass. First thing, you had to watch the video explaining what quadrilaterals are. Then you would read the information on page 45 in your textbook, as well as the key words. Then you complete exercise 4.6, those specific questions in your maths workbook. If you don't have your workbook, it's not a problem. Just write on exam pad paper. Then you can tear it when we get back to school and stick it into your book. So that is the page that gives you some information about quadrilaterals, what they are, and a few properties. The next page shows you the exercise, so you'll have done only the specific questions I asked you. In terms of marking, with constructions, I would need to measure all of your shapes, so do not worry about marking those. Just make sure you have them done. Under constructions, we also need to know how to draw parallel and perpendicular lines, same resources required. Step one, follow the steps on pages 51 to 52 to draw parallel lines in your maths workbook or your exam pad paper. Then on page 53 and 54, drawing your perpendicular lines. Then completing exercise 4.9, those specific questions. A quick recap of the definitions of parallel and perpendicular lines, as you can see, parallel lines are two lines with the same perpendicular distance between them at any point. Your perpendicular lines, two lines that meet at a 90 degree angle. Those are the textbook pages giving you the steps on constructing parallel lines. And those pages are the instructions on drawing perpendicular lines. Please make sure that your compass does not move around. It's not loose. If it is, just ask your parents to tighten the screw, that little point there. It shouldn't move around when you are drawing. The next topic, geometry of 2D shapes. We had already done the circle, triangle, and rectangles. We were also left with quadrilaterals. Same resources required. First, you had to complete exercise 5.2 in your book, all the questions, exercise 5.3, those specific questions. Then you would read through the summary on page 65 and then complete exercise 5.4. That's the page in the textbook with exercise 5.2. I've added an additional diagram there that shows you why the angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. So if you look at quadrilateral with vertices A, B, C, and D, if you draw a diagonal either from point A to C or B to D, you would see that that diagonal divides your quadrilateral into two triangles. Now, we've done triangles already. You know that the sum of all the angles in a triangle adds up to 180 degrees. So angle A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees. The same angle A, angle D, and angle C also add up, also add up to 180 degrees. If you add 180 plus 180, you get 360 degrees. That's the page in the textbook with exercise 5.3. You will have done just the questions that I had given you to do. This slide shows you a summary of the properties of quadrilaterals. Remember, you need to know only the specific quadrilaterals that are on the page. A recap showing you the properties of the quadrilaterals that you need to know. Right, still continuing with geometry of 2D shapes. Congruence is one of the um, concepts that you would need to know. We've already done similarity. Similar shapes have the same shape, but a different size. So one is small, one is big. Congruence, the shapes are exactly the same shape and the same size. 
So you will have watched the video explaining what congruence is. Then you'll have read the information on page 65 and used it to complete exercise 5.7. Okay, so that's a little explanation of what congruence is. Two geometric figures or shapes with exactly the same shape and size. The orientation, meaning how the shape lies, doesn't matter. Those two shapes are exactly the same size and the same shape. page from the textbook explaining what congruence is and then the exercise so this exercise 5.7 you will have had to identify shapes that are congruent just writing down the matching numbers so for example number one with say number six and so on this next slide Speaking specifically about congruent triangles, you will have watched the video explaining the congruence of triangles, the different rules. Then you will have read the information on page 67 and then completed exercise 5.8. So there is the page from the textbook. There are the rules for congruent triangles and then the exercise. So a recap for the rules for triangle con congruency. Sorry, congruency, side, side, side. So that sign in the middle means that triangle is congruent to that one. They are exactly the same. That side corresponds with that one, that side corresponds with that one, and that side corresponds with that one. Just a difference between angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. Angle, side, angle, the side is between the two angles. In this rule for triangle congruency, the side is not in between the two angles. Then explaining the right angle hypotenuse side, there is the right angle, 90 degrees. The hypotenuse, which is the side that is directly opposite the right angle, and another side. The last bit of work relating to geometry of 2D shapes, circles. So we did do some work on circles we were left with a little bit more information that we needed to learn about. You would read through the properties of circles on page 68 and complete exercise 5.9. And then the last bit of work you had to do was completing the revision. Remember, I will put up the pages of the textbook on our Google Classroom page as well as the memo so that you can mark your work. Please do mark with a pencil. That's the page from the textbook with the information about the properties of a circle. So additional information that we hadn't done before, a sector, a chord, a segment, and a semicircle. Make sure you know how to define them and you know how to identify them. That is the page showing you the exercise that you had to do. Remember, only do the specific questions that I gave you. And a recap of the definitions of the different parts of the circle. This is the last bit of work you had to do, the revision pages, only the specific questions that I gave you to do. And a worksheet now for you to please complete. If you can print it, please do. If you can't, draw the shape, label it, write down the statement, and fill in the missing words. This Work is related to the properties of quadrilaterals. So it ends there. Please note, very important, that you are writing down the maths date, year, month, and day. You are underlining it. You are also writing down the heading, being the exercise, as well as the page number and underlining that as well. Please make sure to write neatly. Until our next lesson, stay home, stay safe, and see you again soon.